This week we check out the newest technology at Atronicon. And we show you some wild days at SeaWorld. Plus the latest theme park news and more coming at you right, right now. now. This week's show is brought to you by MEI Travel, our recommended travel agent for theme parks, cruises, and exotic destinations. For a free quote with no obligation, visit mei-travel.com slash attractions. Undercover Tourist is our preferred supplier of discount tickets to Disney World, Universal, and other attractions. For the best deals and planning tips, go to undercovertourist.com or find them on Facebook and Twitter. Hello, welcome to this week's episode of the show. I'm Elisa. And I'm Banks. So, uh, some casting news in the Disney movie community. Yeah. Uh, Emma Watson is going to be Belle in a live action remake of Beauty and the Beast. What do you think? I think, I mean, it makes sense. <laughs> I feel like it's been a rumor for so long that. Not it's even like a rumor, just like fans. A dream cast. Dream cast for a lot of fans, on, especially like on Tumblr. They always like, here's the uh, actresses that should play live action yeah, versions exactly. of the princesses. And Emma Watson's always been. Someone that Bell or Ariel. Exactly. I've seen her in Ariel too. But. So this I think is a very smart casting. Um, it was funny as I was telling Sydney, I was like, you know, Disney's really been doing a lot of live action remakes mm -hmm. of cartoons lately, and I said the next one's Beauty and the Beast. Guess who they're going to play Bell? Who's going to be Bell? Going to play Bell? <laughs> and she goes, you know what? If it's not Emma Watson, I don't care. Well, and I'm like, well, dreams guess come what? true. <laughs> it's Emma Watson. <laughs> what, so. what I'm excited about is a rumor that Chris Pratt might be Indiana Jones. Right. Yeah. I've, I mean, after seeing him in Guardians of the Galaxy, like he would be a perfect Indiana Jones. And it, I mean, I'm, assume, I'm assuming the rumors are that the uh, that he'd be a young Indiana Jones, like it'd be prequels. Mm -hmm. So it's that the uh, other movies are still, you know, canon. I would like. I would that love is a that. a rumor. I would like to come true. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get to some news in the queue, shall we? First up this week, new experiences inspired by the film Frozen will be available for guests on certain Disney cruise ships this summer. On select magic and wonder sailings, guests will be transported to the land of Frozen when the ship is transformed into a winter wonderland and a day of Frozen fun culminates with a celebration with friends from the kingdom of Arendelle. On one morning, guests will wake up to discover a magical freeze has overtaken the atrium lobby with icicles adorning the grand staircase resembling Queen Elsa's ice castle. Other events include meeting Anna, Elsa, Kristoff and Olaf, a scavenger hunt, and a snowman building activity. Olaf and Kristoff will also meet on the other ships, and Frozen segments will be added to certain stage shows. Finally, Disney is cooling down Castaway K with the addition of Olaf's Summertime Freeze Bar. The bar will open this summer near the Pelican Point Tram Stop by Castaway K Family Beach. Here we go. It was only it was only a matter of time before Frozen extended out to the to cruise the line. Exactly, it's true. I think it's great, and and the, some of the older ships too to see that stuff is cool, like the magic and the wonder. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get people selling on those. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm excited to see this. You know, seeing the atrium being transformed yeah. into like this this ice I'm trying palsy. to picture that. It, it reminds me of what they did during the Halloween on the high seas where they had I think the the, the Halloween tree would would change. The pumpkin tree. The pumpkin tree mm -hmm. would would change over time. So mm -hmm. it kind of reminds me of that. Uh, I, I love that. I love getting to meet on a on a, especially Kristoff. You get to meet Kristoff. And I think this Ola. is the I think this is probably the first time we've had a Kristoff a confirmed Kristoff meet and greet. Mm. That's uh, not just like a him in a stage show. So very cool. I, I, I'm gonna go. We gotta go cover this. I know. We, we keep saying we gotta go cover these cruise line <laughs> events. It'll we, happen one day. We we, we gotta do. It. <laughs> we have a bit of fun for fans of Disney's former Adventurers Club. Some of the former Adventures Club cast members have reunited for the Explorers Club, a new downtown Orlando stage show. In the show, you travel back to 1879 and meet a band of pioneers and men of science who will always settle for brandy and cigars, sounds good, <laughs> even if their far-fetched expeditions don't succeed. The Explorers Club is playing at the Mad Cow Theater Thursdays through Sundays through February 22nd. Tickets can be purchased at the Mad Cow website. I'm very excited. I have got to go see this. I. Yeah. I love the Adventures Club. Like I, I moved here, unfortunately. Like oh, I mean, I'm, fortunately I moved here, but unfortunately it was about a year before they closed that down for good. Okay. So I didn't really get to 
experience the Adventures Club as much as I really wanted to, mm -hmm. but I still love the the time I did get to spend there. Did you ever go? Oh yeah, we would go all the time. Um, I was pretty young, but I still remember a lot of it, but I definitely want to see this. This is an awesome I, reunion. I think it's a fabulous idea. Mm -hmm. and yeah, it gives you that kind of Adventures Club vibe <laughs> too. So I, I hopefully, you know, I hope this is successful and they, you know, bring it back in the future, but right now it just has limited run. So mm -hmm. we'll definitely get out there and see this. Mm -hmm. Hi everyone, Hidden Mickey of the Week again. At Mission Space at Epcot, in the gift shop at the exit of the attraction, look for Minnie Mouse in the mural on the wall behind the cash register. There's a small black classic Mickey in the dirt under her left foot. There are a lot of hidden images in this gift shop, but this is a particularly good one. Beep pop pop. Uh, Elisa, what are you doing? I am a robot from Atronicon, the technology convention at the Orlando Science Center. Beep! Oh, yeah, yeah. I love all the cool stuff they show off each year there. Beep, pop, pop. Can you stop doing that? It's kind of freaking me out here. Beep! You're not going to stop until we show the segment, are you? Beep, pop, pop. All right, well, let's show it. Hopefully, Elisa will be back to normal by the time it's over. Beep. Um. I'm here at the Orlando Science Center for the 10th annual Otronicon, featuring local and upcoming technologies of tomorrow from companies such as Lockheed Martin, Disney, EA Sports. Let's go check it out. Mark, do you want to give us a little overview of what happened during the Otronicon this year? Sure, sure. Otronicon, this is the 10th uh, Otronicon here at the Science Center. It is a showcase of interactive technology that is being made right here in Orlando. We're talking about companies like Lockheed Martin, EA Sports, Disney, and it's about showing their technology and getting it in front of the public and uh, getting them to interact and engage with it. And it's really a, a crazy opportunity, crazy awesome opportunity because uh, they, they otherwise wouldn't have a chance to be on this uh, on this technology, like simulators and, 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 and modeling and video games, virtual reality, you name it, we've got it here. Rambo from Lockheed Martin. Would you like to explain a little bit about what Lockheed Martin does for our viewers at home? Sure. Uh, Lockheed Martin is a global aerospace and technology company and we have a pretty large presence here in the Central Florida area. I represent our training and simulation business and we're here this weekend to be showcasing some of our simulation technology. Gavin, tell me what it is that you are wearing exactly. So this is a Fortis Exoskeleton. It's a product from Lockheed Martin. And the whole purpose of this tool is to help industrial shipyard workers carry upwards of 36 pounds so that rather than using their own brute strength to hold up those heavy tools, the tool, the structure can actually support the load for them so they can focus on craftsmanship and rather than using all that effort and getting tired during the day's work. So actually, go ahead and give us a hold. This is a 10 pound device. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's right. So I found one of those adventure trap escape room things, and I'm totally gonna go check it out. Welcome to our headquarters! Do you have what it takes to be a sidekick? I do. My brother Jeff has invented these special telekinetic bracelets for people who don't have telekinetic powers like I do. So, we're gonna see if you can put those to good use in here. Dr. Void's secret armor. Oh yeah, there's definitely no! Okay.
Well, I had a blast this year, and I definitely recommend if you're coming to Orlando in January, putting this on your calendar of things to do, especially if you're a video game geek like myself. If not, come and see the Orlando Science Center on its own. It is such a fun time for the whole family. The next time you plan a Disney vacation, book with a travel agency that's been specifically designated as an authorized Disney vacation planner. Unlike some other agencies, many of our agents' exclusive knowledge of Walt Disney World can help you get the most out of your vacation, and the assistance of our travel professionals can help you get a customized Disney vacation that's just right for you, your family, and your budget. Start planning your magical vacation today by visiting mousefantravel.com. The second annual Wild Days at SeaWorld is here, and we have all the info on it. That's right. We sent Andy there this past weekend when the theme was Penguin Lovers Weekend, and here's what he brought back. Today I'm here at SeaWorld to check out the first event for their 2015 Wild Days celebration. We'll be checking out Penguin Lovers Weekend. Can't wait to see what it's all about. Julie, can you tell us what are wild days? Well, you know, SeaWorld is all about wildlife every single day of the year, but wild days really is an opportunity to kind of focus and look a little bit more outside the parks um, and beyond it during the doing the work of our conservation and rescue and rehab all around the globe and also focusing a bit on kind of the different generations and telling different stories and things like that. So kind of bringing everybody together to celebrate wildlife in a number of different ways. Excellent. So we're here today for Penguin Lovers Weekend. Uh, what is it about penguins that people get so attached to? You know, I, I think they're just a bit comic, you know, and yet they survive during some of the harshest conditions ever, which is pretty impressive from that standpoint. And, you know, they're always well-dressed. So <laughs> how can you beat that, you know? But no, they're, I think they're a little bit human as well, you know, they're walking upright, taking care of their chicks. You know, I think people just relate to them a little bit. Uh, I love them particularly just because of, you know, the, the the harsh conditions under which they live and they survive and they and they you know care for and bring up their their young so you know I think I have a really deep appreciation for that. Great to see everyone here for Penguin Lovers Weekend. That's awesome. We're going to focus on these little guys, but we're also going to show you a little bit of uh, or have a couple of other cool fun birds as well to show you. But at the, oh, Keith's like, where's Penny going? Where's Penny going? <laughs> All right, there you go. Don't run after Penny. Uh, at the end of the show, you guys, I have a very special penguin surprise for you. So don't leave before the end of the show. How many species, not Laura, of penguins are there? Does anybody know? 18. 18. Very good. That's awesome. They range in size from the large emperor penguin, which stands about three feet tall, to the tiny fairy penguin, which is found off of New Zealand and Australia. So in order to stay warm, one of the things that penguins do, uh, well, they're well adapted because they have more feathers per square inch than any other bird. And if they want to cool off, which the Magellanics do, they have a patch of featherless uh, area right by their beak, right by their eye. You might be able to see it there. And that patch actually allows them to dissipate heat. And when they are hot, that patch will get red. Just like when we flush, we're dissipating heat from our body. We work with many organizations around the world besides doing our own rescues here at SeaWorld. We've rescued 24,000 animals at SeaWorld, but we also support organizations like the Audubon Center for Birds of Prey, which is where little Henry came from. Henry is one of the smallest species of owl in the world. Anybody know what type of an owl it is? Oh, you know what? We're going to have that great horned owl up next, but what species is this? Anybody want to give it another guess? It's not a burrowing owl, it's a screech owl. This is your typical classic owl, right? He does the whoo, 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 whoo. 
like that, you know? This little screech owl does a very different sound. He's got a little bit of a trill or scream that you might hear. Barn owls have a different sound. But if you ever hear of an owl in the movies, what sound do you always hear, no matter what species it is? Yes, the hoo hoo. So everybody has considered that that's the classic owl sound, no matter what species of owl it is. We have the largest species of owl in the world that's coming up next. There she is. is just one year old. She's full grown, they've got that huge wingspan. She's doing something called a little bit of mantling there. She's not quite up, she goes, where's my food? Uh, the males are slightly taller than the females, generally speaking. <laughs> and these guys are all on the younger side, so they're just starting out, and that's why this is kind of particularly fun for them. And it's also fun for all of our trainers here, which are showing them, hey, um, you see, they're really unusual and interesting beaks. Uh, I think most of you realize that they eat by putting their head down in the shallow water. They live in very shallow areas and in lakes and in wetlands in many different parts of the world. There's six different species of flamingos. These are Caribbean or American flamingos. Bald eagles in general are great symbols for our country because they are so majestic. They live near rivers, lakes, and streams. They go fishing using those really strong talons where they can just grab a fish right out of that stream and bring it up onto land. They are monogamous. They have the same mate year after year and in fact, use the same nest site year after year. And just like many of us, we want to make sure that our home is in the best condition possible every year. They redo, they add to it, they make it bigger and better because that's where they care for their young. And it's an important place that they do that. So just five weeks ago, he hatched out of this thing, right? And how long do you think it's going to be before he's full grown? Any, okay? Another year, so yeah, that seems like it should be, right? But guess what? Yeah, in about in about five, four or five more weeks, he's going to be full grown. Penguin chicks change so rapidly because they have to survive in a very harsh world. Now you talked a lot about the uh, conservation efforts that SeaWorld does and, and going out and um, protecting and rescuing a lot of the penguins. I so say we have a lot of uh, viewers from all over nationally and internationally. What can they do at home to also support this? Well, that's a great question because uh, really there's things that anybody can do. And one of the things specifically that could relate to penguins would be um, making sure that you buy only sustainably harvested fish, uh, which is also you know, you can find out online. Sometimes it's just a matter of asking when you go to uh, a restaurant or a supermarket to buy things. Years ago, nobody knew where they got their seafood. Nowadays, when you ask a restaurant where your seafood comes from, they know because people have been asking. Mm -hmm. So we do have power in that regard. And there are fisheries that impact certain populations of penguins more than others. But of course, climate change is changing where fish are found. So just any a lessening of your impact of your carbon footprint on the globe would certainly help. And then specifically also strengthening laws that have to do with um, how oil is explored for and how it's transported um, to make sure that we don't have the leakages and the spillages that directly affect wildlife, you know, when, it, when the spills and the leakages happen. So that was your look at the first weekend here of Wild Days at SeaWorld Orlando. Now, if you missed it, you still got two more chances to come out. Next weekend will be Generation Nature with Bindi Irwin, and the following weekend will be Jack Hanna. You don't want to miss it. If you go to Busch Gardens or SeaWorld and you buy a quick queue pass to skip the lines, you have a choice. You can buy the less expensive one that only allows you to skip the line once at each attraction, or you can buy the one with unlimited quick queue rides. If you purchase the once per attraction pass, the team member working at the ride may or may not mark it off when you ride, so pay attention. If they don't mark it off, you're welcome to use your pass again on that ride.
Skip the lines with undercover tourists, crowd calendars, touring plans, and mobile apps. Stop paying full price for your family vacation and visit Undercover Tours today. It's time for this week's calendar. First up, the Real Music Series at Busch Gardens is continuing this week with performances by The Diamonds tonight and tomorrow and Fernando Varela February 2nd through the 6th. As Andy told you earlier, Wild Days at SeaWorld continues this weekend with Generation Nature Live with Bindi Irwin. And Potter fans won't want to miss a celebration of Harry Potter at Universal Orlando tomorrow through Sunday. Remember, you can subscribe to our calendar at attractionsmagazine.com to stay up to date on these events and more. Now, it's time for this month's shout outs. Mm -hmm. Now, first up, we have Isnel Silva from Brazil. Of course, we'll sign your magazine. Here's a hello to Eric Villalobos. Thanks for being such a great fan. And last but not least, a happy early 21st birthday to Logan Kerr. And now we want to thank MEI Travel, our preferred travel agent for Disney World, Universal, and all your other vacation planning needs. For a free quote without obligation, visit mei-travel.com slash attractions. And much thanks to Undercover Tourist, our recommended supplier of discount tickets to Orlando and California attractions. For more information, visit undercovertours.com. Remember, you can watch a brand new episode of the show each and every week. You can also visit attractionsmagazine.com for news and videos throughout the week. Of course, you'll want to subscribe to the magazine itself. Our winter issue is available for purchase through our website and our app or on the Nook. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, next Wednesday, we're actually going to be back at Theme Park Connection to film an episode. So please, if you're in town, feel free to join us over at Theme Park Connection. We usually start around 1030 in the morning. Yep. Definitely come on out. We'll have some special interviews that week as well, so mm -hmm. make sure to see us. And what are you going to be doing for the next week? I, I don't know. I don't have a lot of plans this week. We'll see what happens. <laughs> There's a new zipline place that opened up literally right down the street from my house. We're going actually over there uh, to cover it for the show. We'll have that on a future That's episode. I, I have never done a zipline in Ooh. Orlando. Well, most zip lines I've seen, they have a bit of a weight, they have a weight limit. Now mm -hmm. I've always been over that weight limit. So I'm, I'm going to see what the weight limit is for this one, and I would like to, I would love to try it. So. Yeah. Have you been on a zipline? Um, yes. Yes. Yeah. But, so I had to think about <laughs> it. <laughs> have I have I attached myself to a rope and swung high over the ground? That's not really a memorable experience. So. <laughs> the only the first thing that came to my head was the sky coaster. I'm right. Like, that's not exactly a zipline, but you did make me swing from 300 feet in the air. And <laughs> yeah, that's that's memorable. Uh, <laughs> all right. Thank you so much for joining us, and we hope you'll tune in again next week. Until then, be sure to visit your local attractions, try something new, stay safe, but most of all, have fun. That's the zipline people are calling and want to book you right now. Let's so I'm going to pick that up. Where they are having the oh, thank you. Yes, <laughs> have reunited for the Explorers Cub, a new downstage. Club. I it's can't talk easy. right now. We sent Andy there this past weekend when the theme park was the theme park. Oh, sorry. 